This video is sponsored by SanDisk. The newest M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros have been pretty much universally praised by buyers. And in my opinion, they're the complete opposite of the years where the butterfly keyboard made it hard to recommend buying the MacBook Pro. I have both the 14 and 16 inch M1 Max versions and in a lot of pretty spectacular ways, they're even better than my top of the line 16 core Mac Pro desktop and that has 768 gigabytes of RAM and 32 terabytes of storage. Now people always ask about apps that others use and I figured I'd give you a rundown of a few of the Mac apps that are essential to my workflow when I'm using my M1 Max MacBook Pro on the go as a full-time content creator, but I'll have several apps that I think will be great for anyone regardless of what you do with your computer. Let's kick it off with Bartender. I usually have a lot going on in my menu bar with all the utilities and apps that I'm running. Obviously the MacBook Pro has the notch in the center for the camera giving even less space up there. So I use Bartender, which allows you to manage what shows up in your menu bar. The way I use it is I choose which icons I wanna show all the time and then anything not in that list gets hidden away. If I need to access it, I have it set to show more when I move my mouse over that area and I can click on the Bartender icon to see my lower priority apps if I need to access those. I use Bartender as part of my set app subscription. They're not sponsoring this video. I love the service since I believe it has over 200 apps now that you can access. It's basically like Netflix for Mac apps. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link down in the description. Up next is Reader. This is my RSS reader of choice. If you've never heard of RSS, it's basically a way to subscribe to a website's feed so that content shows up in your feed reader, allowing you to see all the articles that are new on that site. It's like podcasts, but for web content. In fact, podcasts also use RSS to deliver episodes to you. So when you subscribe to a podcast, the way that the new episodes just show up on your phone or computer is through RSS, really simple syndication. And it works the same for web articles. So instead of visiting 100 websites every day or multiple times per day, I subscribe to their feeds and their news articles just show up here in Reader. Reader has a really clean design that looks great on the Retina display of the MacBook Pro and it just works really well, especially if you're into RSS as a way to consume all your media, which I highly recommend. Up next is PasteBot. This is another one that I think is great for just about anyone. PasteBot is a clipboard manager for the Mac. It's a really simple idea. Whenever you copy something, PasteBot saves it. You can then access anything you've copied previously and paste it into any app. You can save and organize frequently used clippings into custom pasteboards and create keyboard shortcuts to access pasteboards and paste specific clippings. PasteBot's search capabilities help locate specific copied and cut items quickly. The searches are based on content or metadata, so you can do things like search for things you copied specifically in the Messages app or only in Microsoft Word in December, for example. With iCloud enabled, your main clipboard, custom pasteboards, and filters sync across all of your computers running PasteBot, so your clipboard and filters will be everywhere that you work. Now, before we talk about how I protect all the important data on my MacBook Pros, I wanna give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, SanDisk. One of the best features of the MacBook Pro is that Apple brought back the SD card slot, which is a big deal for anyone who shoots video or photography or just stores files on SD cards. I've been using SanDisk SD cards in all of my devices since 2006. I'm talking about my Nintendo Switch, in my audio recorder for the Geared Up podcast, and of course, in my camera, that I shoot all my videos on. In particular, I'm using SanDisk UHS-2 cards since they're designed to capture in high speed and can record in up to 8K, which is great for me since I record all my videos in 6K resolution. Once I'm ready to transfer files over, rather than using a dongle, I can now insert the SD card directly into the MacBook Pro, and this SanDisk Extreme Pro SDXC card in particular supports transfer speeds up to 300 megabytes per second. Capacity start at 32 gigabytes and go all the way up to 128 gigabytes for those UHS-2 cards, giving you plenty of room for all your photos and videos. Oh, and as a bonus, SanDisk Extreme Pro SD cards are shockproof, 
temperature proof, waterproof, and x-ray proof, so durability isn't an issue at all. If you're looking to pick up new SD cards for your workflow, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And once again, big thank you to SanDisk for sponsoring this video. Next, something I install on all my Macs to make sure I don't lose anything critical is Backblaze. Backblaze provides unlimited online backup for your computer and any external drives that you have connected to your computer for just about $6 per month. Not only that, but included in that price is a 30-day version history of every file. So let me tell you a story of how Backblaze absolutely saved me. First, just over three years ago, I had my external two terabyte PCIe SSD drive die. And I actually did a video about this, which I'll link below. Now this is a drive where I keep all of the video footage that I'm actively working on, which is too big to include in my local time machine backup. So it dies and I'm in the middle of a big video release. I immediately logged into Backblaze and downloaded the backed up assets of the video I was working on and requested that they overnight me a physical drive with all the data from that two terabyte drive that died. I was immediately back in business with what I needed to work on and the next day my full data arrived and I was able to restore it. Then I sent the drive back to Backblaze and they gave me a refund. Incredible. I've been a paying Backblaze user for several years and not only has it never let me down, it saved me like that on more than one occasion. If you use a computer for anything critical, whether it's work files or important personal files like a photo library, I cannot recommend it enough. Next, PullTube is another indispensable app for me. This one is simple. It lets you easily download video and audio from streaming sites like YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, TikTok, and many more. If I need a piece of footage for a video, I can easily use PullTube to grab it and it'll even transcode the video into MP4 or HEVC formats if I need it to. It's a simple tool, but another that I install on all of my Macs. And like Bartender, this one is part of Setapp as well. Again, links to all these apps are down in the description below. And while you're down there, leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite Mac apps are. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.